from beautiful Cypress Gardens, Florida, the water skiing capital of the world, the USA Network presents the 32nd Annual Senior All-American Water Ski Championships, featuring top water skiers from around the world. The 32nd Annual Senior All-American is brought to you by Mastercraft, the standard by which all others are judged. Budweiser Light, the best never comes easy, that's why there's nothing else like it. Overton's, the world's largest ski dealer. Mobile detergent gasoline, mobile detergent gasoline for your everyday driving needs. And by Levi's jeans, cords and shirts for quality and style you can count on. Hello everybody, I'm Art Ekman and welcome to the 32nd Annual Senior All-American Water Ski Tournament from beautiful Cypress Gardens, Florida. It's the oldest and longest consecutive running tournament in the world. Working with me today, Steve File, a veteran of 28 years in water skiing, and Steve, we've got some world champions today. That's right, Art. From California, Bob and Chris LaPointe. Bob and Chris are both co-world record holders in the slalom event. In trick skiing, Corey Picos. Corey holds the world record now, and today he's out to bust 10,000 points. And I think it's hard to imagine, too, that Corey can get 22 tricks within 20 seconds. That's amazing. It's difficult to comprehend doing one trick quicker than one per second. Do you think the LaPointe's will have any competition? Yes, they will. John McElvey, he's also a former world record holder. He'll be out there to put the pressure on in the slalom event. We also have many outstanding ladies in the open division. Camille Duvall and Dina Brush, both world-class champions, are here. Camille is coming back after a knee injury she suffered three years ago and uh, she came back last season. She's ready to charge this season. She says that camel is back. <laughs> I'm anxious to see uh, Dina too because she looks so smooth through the slalom and practices. She is. Uh, she's a, a world-class skier in all three events so you can look to see her as a front runner each time. Okay, we're all set for the action right now. We'll be right back with the men's slalom from Cypress Gardens, Florida right after this message. Mastercraft, a tough competition performer making waves in ski and pleasure boating. This is the action machine powerful enough to set the pace at Florida Cypress Garden. Mastercraft, even the name means it's a leader, always ahead of the action. Sit in the driver's seat of a Mastercraft. Feel the power. He'll go for the steal. Maybe I can scare him. Yeah, I really scared him. Bring out your best for the wise of life. Bring out your best for the wise of life. You're all the best. You found it in yourself, and now you found it in the beer you drink. Men slalom. John Bacalier, the first competitor in our open men's slalom event, Steve. Excellent. We're taking a look now from the USA Transom camera at water level. Let's take some shots now as John whizzes over the uh, wake. Yes, you see him cut through there. This is an excellent shot of this. 
action on Lake Summit here. Conditions are perfect. You see the smooth water as he comes around each ball. And we're up to number four. Will he get five? Six. Oh, perfect. Perfect. Of course, a perfect, perfect pass. The crowd on the, on the side here in the beach area just goes wild as he made it look easy except for one very difficult area toward the end, Steve, yes, which he had to pull back hard. I've run out of That's road. right, Art. What do I do the uh, course gets increasingly harder as we go on, and so as he got to number five and number six, you can see his all his work cut out for him. There's no, no chance for any error. This must be a perfect pass to put it together on this one. You see now how long the toe line length is? He's got to use his total length to get that full reach to get around the buoy. A former world record holder, does he have a chance this year to maybe compete for that world record? It looks like he has excellent this chance. 38. Yeah, he's in terrific shape. And and a half. 60 buoys right now. Good, seven, okay. Score starts to mount. Art, at this point, the toe line has been shortened by 39 and a half feet. So that'll give him a 35 and a half foot toe line length. Now, as the boat goes down the center of the course, the distance from the boat to the buoy that he must ski around is 37 and a half feet. So his toe line length is two feet shorter than that distance. Now this is where the reach really comes into play. play. He must put it all together on this path. Now he has to only do three buoys. He'll tie Bob and Chris will point co-holders for the world record at 39 and a half off three buoys. If he gets the fourth buoy, he'll set a new world record. Well, let's watch the lanky silhouette as he gets prepared to make a run at Bob and Chris for points record. He says he's ready. He's up. The counter cut. And through the gate we go. All right, let's count him as he comes through. Now, this is the important part. Setting up and coming through the gate. He's through the gate and around one. Watch the elbow bounce in the water. He's down. There's that full reach. And can he hit three? And going for four. Oh. That action happened so fast, I picked it up. It looked like he missed four, but got three. I think he tied three, but did he get the fourth one? We'll have to wait and see what the judges say. What a fun ride. Okay, look at the applause for this guy. Everyone's happy. John McElyay, as we, he signifies to the crowd his appreciation, and he is a happy young man right now. The judges gave him four, so it's a possible new world record. Let's check it out. Watch this. Entering into the gate, he must set up perfect here and see him just slice around the buoy. He's That's around one. number one. Okay, pulling hard for two, and there's that reach. Look at that. Scoops around two, knees in the water, going for all he's got now, pulling at three, and he has it. There's the world record tied at this point. Now watch this. He gets it back together and a full reach. Now watch a little hook in action there, and around four. four. And he knew there was no chance of getting the fifth one. Get himself back together. Now he must touch the wake to get the full credit for the fourth point, which he did. So congratulations to John. The world record, of course, is a pending world record. They have to verify it and go through all the mechanics of establishing the standards and so forth. That's right, Art. This uh, is a sanctioned tournament by the American Water Ski Association, and uh, it's governed by that body, and so it must meet all their prerequisites. A good shot of John as he towels off, and you see there the pending world record. What a way to start the action off today. Great. Everyone's got a mark to shoot for now. <laughs> that smile sure tells a story, doesn't it, Art? Steve, could that be a little defeating to some of the other skiers uh, uh, looking at a pending new world record to shoot at to, to win the tournament? Well, they know they've got the work cut out for them today. Bob LaPointe now, and what a reputation he has, and well-learned, 28 years old, from Carmichael, California, co-holder with his brother Chris of the world slalom record. Nine times national champion. A good shot of Bob LaPointe right there. And when you speak of champions, most everyone turns to Bob LaPointe first of all in slalom. Don't you think, Steve? Yes, Art. Uh, in addition to uh, uh, being a slalom competitor and skier and veteran, he also designs the skis he rides. He works for Robbie Shirley and designs the Mastercraft skis. Very knowledgeable person. He and his brother Chris are a, are a team to be reckoned with. And this morning they know they have their work cut out for them. John McLeay set the pace, has scored 64 buoys, four at 39 and a half off, and that has bettered their world record by one point. Right now there's a slight breeze picking up on the course. It's not enough to affect the water conditions. However, it will affect the area. You'll have a little bit of a headwind going down the lake and coming back, it'll be a little bit of a tailwind. Here goes Bob LaPointe now on his first try, his first run. The counter cut and buoy number one. 
making it look awfully easy, almost a warm-up point. Yes, it is. That's exactly what it is. Shake off the starting knock butterflies and get out and close to it, get down to the serious business of slalom skiing as the toe line gets shorter and the runs that come. Water skiing is such an individual sport until you get to the training of it. Uh, it's always difficult, I think, to train all by yourself. Uh, like a runner, you like to have people to run with you. Bob LaPointe and Chris LaPointe uh, just showing us that uh, even though this is an individual sport, only one person behind that boat. We talked with him earlier about that particular subject. Oh, definitely. Uh, I like having my brother out there push me. I know that if uh, I have to mess up, it's nice to have your brother behind you that uh, can make up for your mistakes. So, uh, like when I had the record, and then he came back last year and tied it, and I was really happy for him. In other words, it's easier to condition when two of you are out there pushing each other. Definitely, especially in, we practice together a lot, and uh, we can help each other on our form. In, that, uh, in the practice, you know, we compete together in practice, not only in terms, so it pushes us on well, they must have pushed him well, Steve, because he made it look awfully easy once again. Yes, he did. At 28 feet off, he just coasted through the course. Uh, well conditioned, well seasoned. And then you made a good point there, Art, that for all the hours and hours of practice it takes to be a, a champion skier, it's a team effort. There's a mom, a dad, or a brother, or a sister, or a good friend, or someone sitting many hours in a boat to uh, allow these skiers to get the practice they have. Here we see Bob in slow motion, just coasting through the course, just smooth, rhythmical action. That shot about. giving the fans on television, though, a good idea as to how far they really have to swing, because on our close-up shots, sometimes uh, they go through it so quickly, it doesn't look like it's that, that long of a motion to the next buoy. Yes, in addition, you can see the amount of water that's displaced each time that you, you turn around a, a corner and to push that much water, you can just uh, get a good idea the amount of energy required to displace that much water. That's slalom too skiing. Long. Making it look easy once again, Steve. Yes, yeah, slalom skiing is very physically demanding. It's it's not as easy as Bob's making it look. Well, they, we're getting down to where it, it gets more difficult this time. He needs a perfect pass. This time coming down and going back, he needs to pick up four boys to catch up with John McElvain. He's at 48 boys right now. He'll be coming back. They chop off three more feet. He'll be coming back at 35 off. Toe line length now is 40 feet. Here goes Bob LaPointe once again. With this toe line length, if he were to stop the boat opposite a buoy and stretch it out straight to the ball that he's skiing around, it would only exceed by two and a half feet. So that means he must get almost perpendicular to the boat. He is also a tall skier, so he can take advantage of his height and get that reach. Not very slender, however, because most of his weight is all muscle. It is obvious that he works very hard on the weights. Yes, ladies. Quite a bull, just a big brute of a guy. Another successful run for Bob LaPointe. Here's where the going gets tough. 38 feet off the toe line now. He must use his body to actually get out to the buoy. Got to take advantage of the reach. And working hard here, but he seems to be in good shape. Around number four. In complete Got five. Reach at six. Got it. Beautiful angles there. He never got behind. And uh, he, even though you said he was working hard at it, you have to work hard at it at that short a rope. He kept his rhythm and almost a perfect line, Steve. Yes, it looked like uh, going around number one, he had a little bit of problem, but he was able to recoup with it. There he is. Now, see, he comes around, gets his hand on the rope, lays back and pulls hard. He goes for the next buoy. And this is where the going is really tough. This is 38 off. Now they'll shorten the tow line length by another one, one and one half feet. So he's got 39 off. And this is the pass that he must come back and better the score of four that John McElroy did earlier. John McElroy, of course, with four buoys at 39 and a half off. Look so, at the expression. Very intense skier. Bob must get at least four to tie. There's a fine crowd on hand here at Cypress Gardens, and here goes Bob LaPointe. Let's see if he can do it. Let's count him as he comes through the course. He's swinging wide, coming, setting up and coming through the gate. There's one and two going for three. 
He's got, got it. it. Can he get four? Four! He's got the hand on. And then he gets five. I think it's a tie. I think we have a tie for first place. Look at this. <laughs> a happy Barbara point. All right. Tying the very first skier of the day in the open men's slalom competition. And that brings the up the subject, Steve. What happens in case of a tie? We put them back on the water. <laughs> Let's check out the replay of the final run, which tied him for the world record, the pending world record. Number one, Steve, as he sets up. That would be two. Now watch as he gets around number three, and you can see he just happened to use everything. The ski is almost out of the water. He lays back tremendous strength here, pulling for number four. Now watch he'll hook number four. You see everything he's got. He's holding on the rope with the fingertips. The handle's down in the water. They gave him five. The judge's official notification gave him five. Okay, we can. There it is, there right there. Is. Yes. Now he must regain skiing control and get back to the wake. At this point, he has four and a half. And as he crosses the wake, there it's an official five. A terrific so, run. Not only is he, now taken over the lead by one buoy. Yes, better John McAleary's record. Here's how the exciting open men's slalom event ended up. A terrific first place finish by Bob LaPointe, as you see there, pushed greatly by the number one performance at the time, John McAleary. He set the record, and then Bob LaPointe had to go out and beat it. Bob's brother came in third, Chris LaPointe. So it's LaPointe, McAleary, LaPointe. We'll be back with more championship water ski action at the 1983 Senior All-American Tournament after this. Make your splash this summer with water sports equipment from the world's largest ski dealer. Overton's 1983 catalog features the latest in top quality water skis and accessories. Names like Connolly, Joby, Kidder, EP, and O'Brien. Overton staff of professionals can answer your questions, process your order from our million dollar inventory, and ship to you the very same day. Call now for your free copy of Overton's 1983 catalog and make your splash this summer with Overton, number one in water skis. Hey, you're the way Cypress Gardens. up action now in the open women's division of the slalom a shot of Dina Brush in the water and Dina was born in Sacramento now resides in Florida Winter Haven Florida and is she a veteran champion the current US national slalom champion also the world jump champion on the world team competing in Italy and Canada along with England Dina Brush getting ready for her first run we talked with uh, Dina earlier about uh, her various workout patterns and this is what she had to say well I ski every single day five days a week take off the weekends unless I have a tournament I ski usually half an hour in tricks each day and then also I go out and I ski twice and slalom twice in jump you've held so many titles and you've been around in the game so long what about the youngsters in the sport now do you kind of look over your shoulder every once in a while well, sure, there's a lot of people coming up. There's um, 
I'm t only 23, but there's still girls that are coming up that are like 12 and 13 in the tricks event. In the jump event, really, there's about five skiers that are at the top, and we don't see anybody too far down the line that's coming up, so we pretty much know that field. The tricks is what I do look out behind me. And you can see why she doesn't look behind her very often at the slalom, Steve. Another perfect run for Dina Brush. 48 buoys total now. Yes, that pass was at 28 feet off the line, so they'll be short in the tow line now. Down to 32 off. And the replay. Now, you see her open arm. It goes up very, very high. Unusual. Uh, not unusual, just a technique that some might employ. You'll see she does it high on one side and keeps it in reasonably close on the other side. Now, sing it. Swing wide. But as she like comes around the turn, stroke. yes, as she comes around the turn, she's got her hand right in there close. Here goes Dina Brush one more time. Now it starts getting a little testy for her. She gets ready for the setup. And it's down to business now. 32 off. And it begins the strength of the pullback there, Steve. Yes, it's more and more difficult here, and it's obvious she's really working now. It's not the smooth coasting home motion that she was doing when she first entered the course. But she right. gets through the run perfectly and looking forward to another one. So two and a half buoys will have a new leader, two and a quarter buoys on this next pass, and she'll tie her current leader, Lisa Harrison, at 56 and one quarter. Check out the replay now, Dina Bush. Now watch, it becomes more intense now. As we get down to the shorter tow line length, the boat speeds at 34 miles an hour, but each skier accelerates and goes much faster than the boat, almost doubling its speed. Turns and pulls, no room for error at this point. And it's a good pass for Dina. Dina now coming for the run that she hopes that will put her into the lead in the open women's slalom competition. There's one. There's two. Nice quick cut. And good, good control out of four. There's five. And she's and got it. easily on number six. Good ride, Dina. Dina Brush and the hand. She puts it up into the air, saying thank you for your acknowledgments as the crowd here at the shoreline giving her her due applause. Let's check out some of the action. Now, this run almost looks smoother than the run before. This is the result of hours and hours of practice. Look at it. Everything must come together perfectly here. Around number one, setting up early in really good shape here. She can afford to lose a little bit on each buoy, and you don't want to lose it on that number one. And look, early again on two, setting up, pulling hard, hooking the ball. Good shape all the way through. Just a perfect run. You can see the buoy bouncing off the thigh as she made a turn around number three. Here are, is our new leader now, the Open Women's Slalom Competition. 38 off. Let's count them with her. This could be her best ever. There's one. Two. And, and can't get to three. So, the so two at 38 off. An excellent run for Dina. So that's her best slalom score. Two at 38 off for Dina Brush, our new leader. Here's the final three now, the women's open slalom. What a nice competition it was for Dina Brush, who took first place. Lisa Harrison with a gutty performance. And then we had Natalie Roberge in the number three spot. we come back, we'll be seeing the women's trick skiing competition.
I thought it might be interesting to take time out and take a look at the various types of uh, skis and their construction, Steve. Yes, in three-event competition, you need a slalom, a trick ski, and a jump ski. What I have here is a slalom ski. It's long, slender, tapered in the back, and it does have a deep fin on it, and this ski has a small wing on it. Gives it that stability you need for high-speed turning action. The slalom has a concave bottom. Again, this ski is designed for one thing, high-speed turning action. The trick ski is much shorter and much wider and it has a wide flat surface on the bottom with no rudder so you can go at slow speeds and uh, it gives you the ability to turn at slow speeds jump off the wake and it's a light ski for turning the jump ski is very much longer it uh, gives you the stability you need at, at the high speeds it has a binder that allows the ski to become an extension of your foot and the jump ski does have a rudder on it contrary to popular belief among people with jump skis now we'll see how that trick ski is used as we go to the women's trick ski competition and up now is Dina Brush from Winter Haven, Florida. She's 23 years old, 5 foot 6, 130 pounds. Very attractive young lady who was raised in Sacramento, California, now lives here in Florida. Dina Brush has already won the slalom competition in the ladies' division, and she's setting up right now to go through the tricks routine. They have two runs, don't they, Steve? That's right, Art. Two 20-second passes to do as many tricks as possible. There are two basic types of tricks, surface turns and weight turns. They accomplish their uh, weight turns by going across the weight, getting into the air, as Dina's doing now. So you put her, her leg across the toe line. She's paid more points for the more difficult tricks. Not only great balance, but also strength involved here. It's important to keep your hips, your shoulders, and your feet all in the same plane and maintain this balance as you go through the course. Should you deviate from that any time, it'll be a quick and hard fall. Dina doing a very fine run, but the horn had sound before she fell. Just before she fell, the horn, the 20-second horn, had sounded. So she got all of her routine in, it looks like, in that first run. And that's right. She got a little bit of a delay, so she didn't get credit for the last tricks that we saw her do. However, she did have a good run, and uh, it looked like it may be enough to bring home the bacon this afternoon. Let's see if we can find out where she gets in trouble as she gets near the end of the course. Reaches behind her back, and I think that would be most difficult to control by the front rope there. This is uh, called a wrap. She's wrapping now. Put the rope all the way around her. Now she'll do a full 360-degree turn, and then an additional 180 as she unwinds and lands backwards. The uh, difficulty of the tricks are becoming greater and greater now, and the skiers are finding they're doing more back-to-back -back turns than they are front-to-front. Dina looking forward to her second run now. She had to be pleased with that first run, Steve. Uh, she's known mainly as a slalom skier, but she's worked very hard on her trick routines. Yes, she's setting the pace that the other girls will be shooting for this afternoon. Here again, this is the wrap. Now this time it's down around the lower part of the body and she's holding the toe line with her foot. This is a bear trap type handle. It's uh, the more pull on it, the tighter it grasps around the foot. So as a result, we have a release person in the boat. Should she fall, they'll release the toe line so there will be no serious injury. And the boat driver once again plays a most significant part here. Yes, it is. Great camera work, as we can see that we got in. Oh, and there's a good example of a fall, and we see the toe line release at that point. So now the question is, did she get enough points to carry on and win this competition? She was doing an excellent routine up to that point. She fell on both runs. However, the balls came right at the end of the run, and that's where a fall usually occurs because the skiers put in the more difficult tricks. And there I said, you lose that balance. you got to keep your feet and your shoulders and your hips all in that same plane. And once you get behind, it's a tumble into the water. Well, she had the opportunity to go to the uh, uh, Masters, or I should say the uh, meet in England, but turned it down for this particular one because she likes this area, likes the people she's working for. Here are the finals now of the tricks in the open women's division. Dina taking first place. Beverly Abbott in the second place position. And a fine performance by Camille Duvall to take the third spot. Well, you're looking at the face of lovely Dina Brush, who has just won not only the tricks, but also the slalom before the tricks. Congratulations. Two entirely different events, and yet you came off with first place surprises. Well, thanks very much. I hope that slalom winning wasn't too much of a surprise. Tricks might have been. Uh, I was real happy with my solemn performance, tied the world record, and Cindy Todd over in England just made one at 38 yesterday, and I think that probably she might have broken the record today, which was a record capability tournament. So I was real happy with slalom tricks. I was just was looking to go out and stand up on my run. wasn't sure, you know, what place I'd get, and I was happy to win in that event too. Now you had opportunities to go to England and elsewhere. What happened? Why did you decide to come to this fine tournament? Well, the British Masters was also held this weekend in London, England. I decided to come here because I was switching 
slalom skis. I went to two different company, and I thought that the practice would help uh, here at home. It was closer to home. It wasn't so cold. And then skiing in this tournament would give me advantage because I hadn't skied on this ski in a tournament. So I was real happy. It gives me a little bit of a, you know, good feeling knowing that I went out and set the world record, and I can go back in the team trials in two weeks and do it there. Now here's the man we've all been waiting for, Steve, out on the course, Corey Picos. Picos is 19 years old, and boy, what a reputation he has established. What is he trying to do here today, Steve? As I said earlier, he's out to bust 10,000 points, and look at Corey go. He's doing 17 tricks in his first run. In his second pass, he's going to attempt to do 22. Look at that, almost one trick per second in this pass. Coming back, he'll be doing it quicker than that. The ski actually comes across the toe line in that trick we just saw. Basically, he's a trick specialist, and you can see why he's become the world champion. Oh, wow. We just saw a trick in there that was pays the highest points of any trick in the rule, but 550 points, a wake line, 540 degree turn, and landing backwards. Very relaxing right now, looking back. A little bobble through that trick run, and, I, and when the horn sounded, I'm not sure he'll be paid for his last two tricks. So it'll just have to be up to the judges to decide when he finished. The one thing with such a tight routine here, Steve, is that you just cannot uh, waste any time with a bobble or you have to either ignore one or not get counted for one. Exactly. Corey's got his run designed to use every bit of time twisting and turning and, and scoring points as he goes through the course. And if he has to spend any time regaining balance, then that's time that's wasted as he could be scoring with. You can see why he's in a class all of his own. 9,700 points, 9,710 to be exact. Well, you see the ski actually went across the toe. That's his best trick score that back, uh, well, it's this year in Lakeland. Again, last week, we're looking forward to his second run now. Great shot from the boat. 20 tricks on the first pass. Here again, he's wrapping the toe line into his foot. Here he comes again. These are the more difficult toe turns. And of course, the more difficult, the higher the score is awarded to the trick skier. He's held 11 national records, nine world standards. Oh, and almost a fall. Look at this guy go. This run, he's going to try to do 22 tricks in 20 seconds. The 22nd timer started with his first movement at the start of the run. Incredible, the twisting moves and that wake to deal with. All right. Oh, the fans are loving this. They're all standing up and there he is. Oh, what a run for okay. Corey. He's happy with that one. He's a little bit in doubt there. Did the horn sound before he got the tricks in at the end of this run also? So we'll just have to wait and see how the judges decide. Starting at age four, he made the U.S. team at age 13. And the first world record he ever set was at the age of 13. Here's some replay action from that final run, and a great one it was. Look, just a fine example of how tricks should be done. Maintaining that balance as he spins and turns through the course. Look at the backward landing, that pays a lot more than a frontward landing. You know what it seems to me now, seeing this terrific action is uh, not too many people put so much into the routine as Coy, but it's got to be a taxing thing for the judges to be able to decide. That's right, these tricks happen so fast it's difficult for a judge to keep up with it. There are only a few guys in the world who have ever exceeded 8,000 points. One guy has exceeded 9,000, and Corey's here trying to knock on the door at 10,000. <laughs> That's incredible. Good job, Corey. Wow. Corey coming out of the water, uh, the judges totaling up the, the entire tricks scene as Corey was the last one to appear. And uh, the judges have decided, here it is, flashed up on our screen right now. Corey Picos, uh, Mike Ferrero, and then uh, Baggiano in third place. Well, Corey, uh, two excellent runs, but when you're talking about uh, 10,000 points in a world championship form, uh, did it come up to your standards? Um, not really. Uh, both runs were, were all right, and uh, I got through, got through the runs, but uh, they weren't quite as good as I'd like them, but then again, it's hard to be happy. <laughs> it looked like in the first run, right about the middle of the run, that uh, you had a little slip, and that kind of threw you off a little bit, made you late. How do you recover from an incident like that, though? Well, the, in water skiing, there's a lot of variables. So, so I practice a lot in all kinds of conditions, and, and uh, it's just something that you just got to react to. <laughs> Corey, congratulations on the fine victory, and uh, we're looking forward to seeing you many more times in world championship form. All right, thank you very much. Excitement of the women's jumping events at the Senior All-American Water Ski Tournament coming up next.
returning to the open women's jumping division now from beautiful Cypress Gardens. And the senior All-American 1983. Alina Schellander from Sweden. Alina with the counter cut, cutting across the wake. It's the ramp nicely, got good extension. And a tough landing. Yes, that was a good control jump. She accelerated just nice and easy to the jump, but maintained control going across the ramp, and she had a good lift. You could see the pop right at the top. Looks like she had a good extension now. She rides the T-bar back to conserve her arm energy. She's 16 years old, five foot seven and a half. Let's check out the replay of this fine jump. Right, watch as she just come in nice. Easy cut, coming in, accelerating slowly. Now watch as she gets on the jump. Bam, right there, she pops with a lift, and it was a little bit late, so maybe not the distance I originally thought she had. Now we saw her go off the far side of the ramp there. So, in essence, the skiers are trying to hit a diagonal, low on the near corner and take off of the far corner. Is that correct, Steve? That's right, Art, but it's a result as uh, the, uh, well, let's go through the, the stats here. Her distance was 105 feet. She was in the air for 1.49 seconds. But here's the secret, that lift, that four feet per second, and that's what she's trying to do, is kick off the top, and her maximum height there was would only give her 12 feet. But the diagonal crossing of the jump is a result of the cut, and uh, the purpose of the cut is to try to double that boat speed, get uh, as much speed as possible as they come across the ramp. There's the counter cut. Setting things up for her third run now. Alina Schillander. the wake, gets a pretty good lift off, and recovers nicely, almost from getting into the boats over at the far side, Steve. Yes, it was an excellent jump. The uh, the course conditions here are perfectly calm. The watcher skis as she approaches the ramp. We see her turn here, starter cut, indicates there's a few boat rollers in the course. Now watch as she crosses the wake, we'll see this flutter of the skis or a continuous chatter as she goes on up the ramp. See the pumping motion of her feet? really means she put it together well to get the lift that she did. It was a good jump for Alina, and I'm sure it's going to better her second effort. So 118 feet, a good jump. And, and she is the current leader now with 118. So 118 feet, you can see her lift now is almost doubled from her first jump to 7 feet per second, and her maximum height was 14, where on her first leap was only 12. So uh, just a progressive increase here with each jump. The next jumper in the open women's division, Camille Duvall, our comeback girl. There's a nice shot of Camille. Another Florida product, 23 years old. Camille for her second jump now, her longest jump ever, 1982. It was 134 feet in the Southern Regionals. It's a lot of speed on that counter cut. Now waiting for the boat to get in the right position as she'll make her cut to the raft now. Let's go. Skis apart a bit. Camille was really charging the jump this time. She had good speed all the way to the ramp. They couldn't put it together on the ramp. She, said, you know, she uh, rearranged her pattern a little bit after the first jump and has set it up now for the second jump. She gave the driver the signal there. Perfect pattern. Let's try to do it on this third one. 75 feet of rope. Watch this, charging aggressively, coming at the jump, a lot of speed, but too much speed to be able to control it on the ramp. Comes off, doesn't get the lift she'd like to. So your skis wide, no extension. But I think she'll still score a reasonable distance. Very nice landing for such an interesting flight pattern. Right, 121 feet. 121 feet, she is the new leader. Wow, if she could have gotten the lift with that speed, she would have soared way out there. Camille Duval, already with a leap of 121 feet to take the lead in our open women's competition. And it looks like she's going at it just as aggressively as she did the second jump. Waiting for the boat to get in position. Pulls back and a power across the... Nice lift. Yes, another super jump for Camille. She's been there before. She's a veteran. She knows what it's all about. She had to come out here and didn't do well in slalom, didn't do well in tricks, and so she was really going for it in the jumping. She's got it today. The junior girls national jump record holder at one time. Let's check out the replay of the third and final jump, Steve. Watches the speed builds all the way to the ramp, pulling hard, just pounding with everything she's got. Now on the ramp, she could just put her feet under there and push off. 
There it is. You see the ramp doesn't crush her, however. She doesn't get the lift she'd like to, and I think her second effort's going to be the best one. Looks like she started the lift just a little bit too soon. It's the, the key is to have, her, have control, have your skis under you as you hit the ramp so you can push away from them and go up and not be spending energy and pushing your skis out wide. So 112 feet on her third jump, that makes her second effort the best one at 121 feet. So there's our leader. And there's the computer results of the final leap. 12 feet was her maximum height, three feet per second on the lift. So 112 feet was still a good jump. Here's the official finish in the Women's Open Jumping Division. Camille Duvall, a great first place finish. Then we had Helena Shalander second, and a tie for third between Christy Hill and Lisa Harrison. The thrills and spills of the men's jumping event coming up next. Here's an event that I'm really looking forward to, the Open Men's Jumping Competition. There you see the winner of the slalom event, now trying his first leap in the jumping event, Bob LaPointe from Carmichael, California. Not wasting any time for Bob LaPointe's second try. Looks like a little snowplow there for a while, Steve, and now he gets up speed. Side camera shot from the boat. On the point, he's on. And another super jump. You can really see on his approach to the jump how wide he gets from the boat. He is out just opposite, standing right next to the driver as he starts his cut and then accelerates all the way to the jump. There he is, pulling hard, watching come right to the top of the ramp and then a full extension on the legs and gets that lift and soars way out in the air. There it is right now, pop. See the legs straighten out, straight legs, as he leaves the top of the ramp. And I think we'll see a much better distance than his first jump. Soaring through the air. Watch the landing. Yes, this is where the harness becomes somewhat of a hindrance, so he must sit down and gain control. 161 feet, a much better effort. Here we see him giving signals to the boat driver, so he's got something set up for his third jump. He's repositioning his boat. So 161 feet to get that, he had a maximum height of 20 feet. You can see he is way above in the air. Eight feet per second on his lift, two feet better than his previous jump, and over two seconds in the air. 
Bob LaPointe coming around for his third jump. Incidentally, the boat drivers today, Jack Walker, Bill Stevenson, Bob Siegel, and Les Todd. What a job they've done today. That's right, Art. In any water skiing event, it's a team effort. Boat driver and skier. Okay, there's the judges. You cannot have a magnificent tournament like this without some very talented judges. There's C.W. Lowe is the chief judge, assisted by Milt Nash, Art Kozier, Stu McDonald, Fred Marquette, Donna Switzer, Stan Switzer, Charlotte Melchers, Bob Hutchinson, and Colonel Allen. Our right, congratulations to them as we look to Bob LaPointe now for the third and final leap in his try. The acceleration across the way, up the ramp, and a good lift. And Bob bangs off another one. Boy, he slapped that water hard. As you can see, it gets super wide from the boat, really out there, and then turns and cut for aggressive cut all the way. The strength in his arms and shoulders, he can he can uh, put so much tension on that rope. And watch as the spray at the, from the skis here, which means he's accelerating all the way to the jump. See the lift right off the top of the ramp, soars out there, and now he must maintain control on his landing. And he's got it, stands up and skis away. One step four. Excellent jump. Well, they're whispering through the crowd now. 156 feet. Not quite as good as the 161. Didn't quite get the height he did last time. No, he didn't. He had 17 feet was all compared to the 20 feet the last time. And this time it was two feet per second. So it appeared like he had excellent lift, but it was uh, not quite as good as we thought. 1.84 time in the air, so it's a 156-foot jump for Bob LaPointe. So Bob LaPointe, a double winner here at Cypress Gardens, Florida. After winning the slalom and waiting through all the competition to be done, he came back to hit that jump beautifully. Rick Anderson from Anderson, South Carolina. His best leap is 161. Rick Anderson. He's trying to best Bob LaPointe's finest effort this afternoon. Here's the second jump now for Rick Anderson. Let's see if he can best that 155. He would have to do his very best ever to win the jumping competition. Slows up even with the boat. It'll take a terrific whip now to get a good speed. And another super jump. Look at that. See that guy soar. Another nice lift. It didn't seem that he had the speed this time. No, he was a little late in getting uh, the power into the whip. Probably down on the speed a little bit, but good lift off the jump. But this is good acceleration. This is not inadequate speed, and that's the key, to be able to put the two together. And most guys will get too much speed and can't control it on the ramp. There we see Rick doing just what he has to do. And once again, let me mention, this tailwind is still on the course. It's affecting the jumpers greatly. It gives them a slack line in the air so they cannot maintain control, which they need to do to ski away from that landing. 160 feet, 160. Oh, he's closing in on Bob LaPointe. 160 feet for Rick Anderson. Interesting to see the computerized results now. There it is. Again, 18 feet, the lift, 9 feet per second, and almost 2 seconds again, 1.95, giving him that distance of 160. So this indicates that he had a little more speed than the first time. And the wind is now really kicking up across the lake. And Rick will be going for it in his third attempt. OK, he's looking for the title now in jumping. Not just the all-around title. In performing in all three events this afternoon. He needs two feet to win, one foot to tie. A little deeper angle now. And he comes up and it's a beautiful jump. Good speed, but I don't think he it got the lift. Like I don't think he like got, he got, got the, the kick height. on the jump. Well, tough break. That was the jump for the All-American champion, but he was knocking the door at 1-6-0. What an effort by Rick Anderson. Let's check out now to see what happened on that final approach to the ramp. It's probably this additional win. You see the speed coming to the ramp. Now watch him on the ramp. Ski spreading out and not giving him that lift he'd like to have had. That would have carried him well past that 1-6-1 mark for the All-American champion, jumping championship. So a very fine effort for Rick this afternoon. 151 feet for his third jump. So his 160 is going to be his best effort, and that'll give him second place in the jumping competition. Final results are in for the open men jumping. Here's Bob LaPointe at number one. Rick Anderson almost getting up to LaPointe's total, taking the second spot. And Ham Wallace in the third position.
With us now, Bob LaPointe, a double winner in this afternoon's competition here at Cypress Gardens, Florida. And uh, gosh, what a mark to look for when you all of a sudden look up and see McElroy uh, uh, establish such a record right off the bat. Yeah, in fact, I didn't even get to see him. I was over helping Rob Shirley with Masscraft Boat Company with a couple things and uh, came over to Chris afterwards. I said, well, how'd Johnny do? And he says, Johnny, just 439. I go, holy cow, it's time to wake up here. <laughs> that turned you on then because you such a smooth, beautiful effort. Yeah, well, it gave me, you know, definitely right away my mind started went straight to concentration on what I had to do because I knew if John could do a run like that the, the conditions had to be real good so I thought what the heck now it was just after you performed in the jumping conditions uh, they changed uh, a little wind came up it got cooler uh, did that affect your jumping much well my main problem in the jumping was I just I had never jumped here before I had never even practiced on that ramp or anything so I took it real cautious on the first couple felt things out and it felt real comfortable and then on the last one I just didn't have a good setup I just wish I had another shot at it from the Senior All-American Water Ski Tournament at Cypress Gardens, Florida, after these messages. Meet Mastercraft, a tough competition performer making waves in ski and pleasure boating. This is the action machine powerful enough to set the pace at Florida Cypress Garden. Mastercraft, even the name means it's a leader, always ahead of the action. Sit in the driver's seat of a Mastercraft. Feel the power. Make your splash this summer with water sports equipment from the world's largest ski dealer. Overton's 1983 catalog features the latest in top quality water skis and accessories. Names like Connolly, Joby, Kidder, EP, and O'Brien. Overton staff of professionals can answer your questions, process your order from our million dollar inventory, and ship to you the very same day. Call now for your free copy of Overton's 1983 catalog and make your splash this summer with Overton, number one in water skis. afternoon of world championship skiing that's for sure and i guess steve you can suspect that with world champions that you're not going to get too many surprises no art uh today we could just pretty much predict what happened bob the point although he had a lot of pressure from john McElvey in the slalom event john went out and beat his record by one buoy bob had to come back and beat it by two uh won the slalom then went on and won jumping so he had two wins there Corey Picos did his thing in tricks. He won the trick event. In the ladies' division, Dina Brush swept away with two events, and then Camille Duval come on on wind jumping. Nice comeback for her. Yes, it is. The camel is definitely back. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for being with us. And in fact, uh, a week from today on the USA uh, Cable Network, we will have the Barefoot Masters right here at Cypress Gardens, Florida. Art Eckman, on behalf of Steve File, saying thank you so much for being with us. The 32nd Annual Senior All-American Championships have been brought to you by Mastercraft, the standard by which all others are judged. Budweiser Light, the best never comes easy, that's why there's nothing else like it. Overton's, the world's largest ski dealer. Mobile One Synthetic Motor Oil, Mobile One, the best engine protection you can give your car. And by Levi's Benswear, makers of Levi's Action Slacks.